Hey everybody, thanks for joining today's NTOP Live about reusable design workflows for large product families of medical devices. This is not a direct continuation of my last NTOP Live, but some of the blocks and workflows that I will be referencing here today are elaborated on in more detail in previous NTOP Lives. You can find those on our YouTube channel or at www.entopology.com slash videos. Today, I'd like to show a robust workflow in NTOP platform that a medical device designer can come to expect after gaining some familiarity with the software and creating their own workflows for their own medical devices. Our example product type here today will be an implantable orthopedic device, specifically the spinal ALIF. ALIF here standing for anterior lumbar interbody fusion. Uh, though it may seem very specific to the medical device industry, the insights and workflow flexibilities showcased today are actually very transferable to any other product type and industry application. Now, the classic NTOP platform orthopedic implant design workflow, that's quite a mouthful, uh, it's fairly intuitive and consists of four major steps. The first is to import your CAD bodies, and though we take in native SOLIDWORKS part files, step files, and the like, uh, the most compatible format to work with is actually the parasolid. So typically the main form and net shape of your implant design is created in your traditional CAD tool and each part configuration is exported as a separate multi-body parasolid file. What that means is that if you have an 87 part configurations in your part family, you should be exporting out 87 multi-body parasolids to work with. This may seem a bit cumbersome at first, uh, but it's actually one of the most thorough approaches to ensure the highest level of traceability when you're working through the entire part family. Uh, the next step is to convert to the implicit format. In case you don't know too much about our implicit modeling technology, it is a really lightweight and efficient way to manage and modify geometry, especially when complex processes such as topology optimization and latticing are deeply involved. Converting your parasolid model to our implicit data model is what will make the lattice generation process really fast and repeatable for all of your part configurations. From there, it's just a matter of applying your complex structures, in this case, applying your osseointegrative lattice, and then ultimately meshing the result into an STL file so that you can finally print your parts. So pulling up our actual workflow, we're going to see the design workflow that we described in actual practice with this ALIF. Uh, called out at the top of this is the input directory with a reference to the part number. Uh, by changing just this part number, the entire workflow will actually import a new part configuration and update to accommodate the new geometry. But stepping through the process, uh, we can see that we have a CAD body here. And the first step is to convert the CAD body to our implicit bodies. So if I hide this and I show the individual implicit bodies, you can see that visually there's really not much of a difference. Uh, but now that they are implicit, we can do Boolean operations to combine all the similar regions and really separate all these bodies out by a solid region, a window lattice region, and an osseointegrative integrative lattice region. So if I hide all of these again, you can see that I can show the window lattices together and all of the internal osseointegrative integrative surface regions together as well. From there, we use these regions or volumes uh, as the base to populate with our lattice structures. So for the window lattice, we've chosen this gyroid lattice here and filled both windows uh, with this structure. And for the osseointegrative lattice, we've chosen this randomized Voronoi uh, lattice structure. And it's a randomized distribution of lattice beams to create a structure that closely mimics the trabecular structure that exists inside actual human bone. Now that that is done, a final Boolean operation is performed to combine all of these solid and lattice bodies together into a single unified part. And then we're going to mesh this part to create an STL. Now, when we compare this to the classic design workflow that we described earlier, uh, we seem to really have hit all the marks, right? In theory, we can just push all of our part configurations through this design workflow and just be done. However, uh, NTOP Platform doesn't just create parts in a linear way due to the canvas-like nature of uh, the design environment, multiple workflows can actually exist within this same NTOP file, and sub-workflows actually exist in this very file. Uh, what I didn't mention before 
was that there's actually a serialization or labeling workflow that is being applied to the solid region. As a part of the design process, I've opted to apply a DBOSS feature on the corner of this implant to indicate the part number. In this case, we can see that we've applied ALIF 06025. Uh, for this part family in particular, the first two numbers, 0 and 6, describe the base width of the nose of the ALIF in millimeters, so 6 millimeters wide for this part. The last three numbers describes the angle of the ALIF in tenths of a degree. So the 025 indicates that the angle of this configuration is 2.5 degrees. It's definitely more on the subtle side, uh, so it's a bit hard to see this taper, but it is there. By serializing our part numbers with this kind of convention and labeling them directly on the part, there is a massively reduced risk of part confusion during the manufacturing and post-processing stage. Uh, one can imagine where a machine technician can remove an entire build plate of dozens of these freshly printed and similar looking ALIF devices and not really know which one is which. During the inspection process, uh, just being able to identify the part at first glance can really expedite the time required to perform the inspection steps. So not only is labeling a great way to you know, reduce operational risk and human error, it introduces the potential to just make things more holistically efficient. Uh, and of course, I've chosen to deboss this label in this example, but embossing it so that the layers can be machined or polished off at a later point in time, that's just as easy to do. The other sub-workflow that we see in this example is actually this set of reporting blocks. If we want to learn more about how this reporting workflow works, uh, feel free to refer to my previous NTOP Live about generating reports. But the gist of it is that the workflow that we have created is a repeatable process, but each input that we plan on pushing through is going to yield a unique set of results. If we generate a lattice, the distribution of nodes and beams will be unique. If we generate a mesh, the number of triangles and nodes will be unique as well. Because the part configuration defines a specific implant size, properties such as volume and mass, these are all going to be unique to that part configuration. As a result, uh, this whole reporting workflow here actually keeps track of all this generated information and spits out a text file report that can be used as a QA reference and a valuable component for your internal traceability compliance process. So if I jump over to this folder that I have here, I have six bookend sizes of my larger product family, each with their own STL file and text file report with associated properties. Now, obviously at the production level, you wouldn't just do these bookends, um, but as you can see, as I jump through all these files, so this is the 06125, the 08125, the 08025, the 10025, and the 10125. I've applied this exact same workflow to all of these bookend cases, and the only thing I've changed in the workflow entirely is the part number variable. So the beauty of designing your orthopedic implants in this matter is not just that the complex lattice geometry is fast to generate and easy to handle, uh, but the design workflow is scalable across the entire part family. It's just a matter of updating the part number that the workflow is looking at, and you're already well on your way to working on your next configuration. The next step from here is simply to automate and batch process the input with a little bit of scripting, and you've got a seamless, human-free design workflow that just works over and over again, pumping out STL after STL, report after report, while you, as a designer, who used to have to actually manually toil over this process by hand, you can just sit back, get a cup of coffee, and just watch it happen. Obviously, what I've shown here today is really not intended as a be-all end-all solution when it comes to designing these osseo-integrative lattices for your larger product families. Uh, there are many ways to go about this within NTOP platform alone, but this has just been a showcase of what NTOP can offer as a design platform to create these automated yet nuanced solutions that work for your specific applications and serve your specific needs, all while supporting a more traceable process.